What's up? This is Rick Rumble from Rumble in the Morning on FM 99 Radio in Norfolk, Virginia, and worldwide at FM99.com. And you are listening to the Hoppy and Super Rich Show. All right, welcome back. This has been the show of callers, not even planned out. Like, that must mean that our show is growing. That must mean that our show has talent. That must mean that our show has potential, Super Rich, if we have a callers that we don't even set up. We're trying to sure. break the golden number of six. All right, so we had Adam Kowalski, who is known as K-Wall on Twitter, my guy. We had a funny comedian known as Stacey Prussman on the show talk about her career. And on the phone line, he was my co-host at WHCM 88.3. The show is called Chi Town and the Big Apple. Get it? Because I'm from Chi Town and he's from New York, the Big Apple. All right, enough of the shenanigans. Neil Dwyer is on the phone line. Okay, so we're going to have Super Rich read everything going on in the news and have your wit and your intelligence since you go to the University of Miami chime in. So, what's up, Super? I'm Rich. All right, so a naked man walked into the Capitol Rotunda at the uh, um, in Wisconsin in Madison. So state officials are looking into how a naked man found his way into the Wisconsin State Capitol's rotunda. The man appeared undressed in the rotunda around 4 p.m. Monday, uh, and he was completely naked and began shouting at the top of his lungs. It was unclear what he was saying. Uh, a police officer quickly led him away. Uh, Stephanie Marquise is a spokeswoman for the State Department for Administration, which oversees the Capitol Police. She said the man was screaming that he was Jesus Christ. <laughs> Neil, how Typical would you people. react if you see this bad crap crazy guy naked screaming, I'm Jesus Christ, I'm Jesus Christ, damn it. How would you react? Well, considering the fact that Jesus Christ, in fact, most, of the, most people in his time were Naked, so he's probably just being historically accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it's it that point, way. Yeah. So it's just like imagine when you see that in front of you, super rich. You're just like trying to have a good day. Maybe you're with your kids, and you just see this crazy naked man with that weird look in his eyes. That look that crazy people have that you see when you're on the street and they're homeless, or just crazy people in general at the library, right. where their eye isn't all there and their eyes are a little twitchy and they shake. Like, I was in St. Louis, and there was this guy that came up to me in a racing suit. Like, he was like a NASCAR racer, and he said, where's the NASCAR race? And I said, oh, go down the block. The guy Jeff was looking for you. So, like, it's things like that where, Neil, when you see the person, you just know they're crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, we got a big problem with security. You got a guy jumping the White House fence and actually getting into the East Room, and now you got a naked guy. Yeah, that was horrible. He across the Wisconsin State Capitol. Whoever... Super rich. Let that guy in. Not just to jump the fence. Not just to get across the Well, nobody let him in. He, there was a security breach. He was able to make his way all the way into the White House, which is like physically impossible, I would think. But somehow You'd he made like it through. You'd like to think that it was physically impossible. Except <laughs> you never know with things these days. These guys, these everything can pass, be hacked or breached down. or whatever. These guys pass down eighth grade field trips to the White House or one of the museums out there, and yet this guy gets in. Yeah, exactly. And I mean... It's just like, was this guy maybe on some Xanax, the security guards who let him in, or were they gullible or not there on the job? Whoever let this piece of dirt in should be fired immediately. Not suspended, you are fired. Because that is a security breach to the president. I don't oh, yeah. care if well, the, the, the girl who uh, was sort of in charge of security at the White House, she has been uh relieved of her job and now she'll get to work at target because she'll be blackballed from any security job how do you let this buffoon in neil i mean think about it if you're republican or democratic you might not like obama or you might think he's the greatest thing since sliced bread and the invention of technology but here's the thing no one wants to see the president die and that might have been the guy's motive or to at least to put the president's life in danger. This is an absolute joke that this guy got in. You know what I mean? And they, want, and they wonder what would happen if women were all our world leaders. Oh, my <laughs> God. Imagine a Hillary Clinton on her period freaking out. Oh, my God. Someone's in the White House. She's running around screaming while sipping on green tea, angry while watching Downton Abbey on TV. Leave me alone. It's my hour to relax. We won't exactly have the next Margaret Thatcher, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So going back to the story about this guy who walked into the uh, Capitol building in Wisconsin, uh, um, so the spokeswoman said she will uh, be taken, or that 
the man will be taken to jail on suspicion of disorderly conduct. On suspicion? It's and lewd right. and uh, lash of his be- behavior. And that's that. You have those security cameras in downtown Chicago that show things in the ghetto. It'd be like if you had a clear-cut drunk driver and he gets taken in, but you say he got taken in on the suspicion of drunk driving. It's the same thing here. We all know the guy broke in. Why is it called suspicion of breaking in? There's clear-cut evidence that he broke in. What are you talking about, you dimwits? You know what I mean? All right, call the yeah. show. 630-785-2510. If you want to get out with my old co-host, Neil, and my current co-host, Ryan Risky and Super I'm Rich. All right, what else is coming up? So a West Fargo, North Dakota man is facing charges after driving a lawnmower while intoxicated. Oh, that's a great combination. Driving a mower in general means you're crazy if you're driving and not to mow lawns. And it's very <laughs> rednecky. But when you're drunk... That's not a good combination. No. So a West Fargo man with multiple DUI convictions was arrested while driving a lawnmower Sunday. According to uh, court documentations, Earl Lee Johnner had a blood alcohol level over .27. That's, that's, Jesus that's an Christ. awful lot. Oh, my God. And was giving rides to children in the 300 block of 9 and a half Street East in West Fargo, North Dakota. Where are these parents, Neil, that maybe don't want you around this guy? And here's the second <laughs> yep. thing. I just don't get it. He has multiple convictions of DUIs. Why are you giving him second chances? Maybe you know he what? didn't have the license to drive the lawnmower, but maybe he should be in jail or a mental hospital just so that there's no chance that he gets behind, so that he gets behind the wheel. It's like this. Once you're a ch- cheater, you're always a cheater. Once you're a pedophile, you're always a pedophile. Once you're a dr- you're going to do it again, just like me. Once you rant on the air next Thursday, I'm going to do it again. Nobody ever changes. What do you think? When Super Rich was starting the story, I was picturing one of those groundskeepers that mows, you know, the high school football field. And imagine. Yeah, he kind of looks like that. Mow, he, he mowed a curse word. He mowed a curse word into the lawn. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. It doesn't say anything about that, but you you might be onto something. Uh John is accused of having a six-pack of beer with him on the lawnmower and damaging the corner of a building. So he did sort of run into a building. Uh, Johnner is charged with felony DUI, and according to court records, he has nine prior DUI convictions. Why is he not in jail? This dumbass should not be out. Because, like I said, Neil, once you do something awful, you're never going to change. It's hard to change someone. I get after the second DUI, okay, he might learn his lesson. Third, maybe he screwed up. Fourth, this is your last straw. But how do you have nine convictions? You're putting people's life on the line and your own every damn time. You're a buffoon who gets drunk on moonshine and then drives a lawnmower like a piece of dirt. You know, I love how the kids also wanted to go on rides. Like, I think I wanted to go on a ride and a lawnmower when I was like five, and that was about it. I don't think I've ever wanted to go on a lawnmower ride. I mean, you could just... I don't know, go on the, on a play set or go to the park or something. It's more enjoyable than riding a lawnmower. My family's actually in North Carolina, and they give their kids rides on tractors because they're farmers, but they're not drunk. They're not doing moonshine or the cheapest beer like... Um, natural Light or something. Or yeah, natural yeah, ice. Natty's yeah. Light or just something. PBR. Yeah, exactly. They're not getting drunk on that. They're good, hardworking farmers who want to have some... F- some fun with their kids. So shame on this guy, and shame on the court system for letting this guy get away with it. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing in North Dakota. This is his (laughs) 10th conviction, double digits. Like, how do you explain the 8th and the 7th time, Neil? Okay, he'll keep improving. He'll get better. After the 3rd or 4th time, this guy's a buffoon. This guy's never going to change. You know, after enough times, you, after enough times, you just gotta let them go. Let them go out of pasture. Let them go out of pasture. Just you know, take yeah. them out back, and you know, <laughs> you know, take care of them. Do, do an old yeller on them or something. Yeah, go ahead and pull old yeller on them. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right, call the show six three zero seven eight five two five one zero. That is six three zero seven eight five two five one zero. What else is coming up? All right, uh, so the windows were broken at a Chuck E. Cheese by gunfire, and this is... That uh, place is still in business? Yeah. I never liked Chuck E. Cheese. I never liked it either. Oh, I always liked it when I was little. I never liked it. I, never, I didn't think the pizza there was that great. The, well, the pizza there isn't good because you're not going to Chuck E. Cheese for pizza. There's no one ever on a romantic date that's like, hey, 
Let's not go to Giordano's or Gino's East. Let's go to Chuck E. Cheese and get a nice slice of pizza. I mean, I, I used to been, like it. But I think I've only edible. been. I think I've only been there like three times. Here's the thing with um, Chuck E. Cheese pizza. It's better than fast food pizza. It just isn't great. No, I actually, I got lost in um in the uh, jungle gym or play place or whatever you call it. I got lost in there once, and a worker had to come and get me out because I couldn't find my way out. I think that happened to me, too. I think it was at one to, of those two did places. To, did, they to, did they have to grease them up, you know, kind of get a little butter on them and slide them through yeah, the tube? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this was just last year. How do you so, get no, I'm lost <laughs> in there? It's no, I think that happened. I don't know. I was like four or three. Yeah, and you don't have the best what sense the of direction, name? and you don't have a GPS for Chuck E. Cheese at the age of four in 1998. I'm pretty sure now they the have GPS. That, what was the name the of the restaurant? mascot? Uh, his name's Chucky, right? Yeah, Chucky e. Cheese. Was it Chucky? Okay, wow. Yeah. I I think I, I don't know. I think they had like a whole crew with him, and they would play stuff while you're eating pizza. Yeah, yeah. I always wondered about the guy because you don't know what he looks like, and he's just giving the kids high five. Just some some creepy bald guy who's like 50 years old. It's just like under there, <laughs> or an old widow. There's a couple kids under there too. Anyway, moving on to the story. Uh, several windows were shot out at the Chuck E. Cheese restaurant, uh, and this is in Pico Rivera in, I guess, the Los Angeles area, uh, during a Sunday night argument between two men in front of the business. Uh, so they said, one of the two men involved in the argument produced a handgun and fired at least 13 rounds, geez, with four or five striking the windows at the busy restaurant around 8 p.m. I'm not surprised this happened, because like two years ago, when my cousin turned eight, I went to Chuck E. Cheese, and half the parents there, I guess because it's a cheap place to take your kids, it just looks like the place where parents have a handgun in their pocket, or a knife, or like a Boy Scout knife, and they're ready to use it, because they're awful parents. They let their little brat of kids that have disease they're not diseases, but they have colds. They have snotty noses. They just let them roam around while the parents are just like on their phone or eating pizza or doing whatever. Like, Chuck E. Cheese is not a good place at all. Chuck E. Cheese is the Walmart of, like, play pens. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think last time I was there, I, I must have been no older than five, probably. And the arcade games are so pricey. And you see these moronic parents trying to win their kids' PS3, Neil. Neil, you see these parents trying to win their kids' PS3s, and it's not going to happen because those things are set. Those machines are set to not let you win it. Exactly, they're rigged. You know, I went to the Jersey Shore once, and I saw a guy with those one of those cranes that you're talking about, yeah. and he had a stack of $5 bills. It was $5 to play a game, and he had a stack of fives in his hand, and he just kept putting one in after the other. And I'm just thinking, what kind of what kind of his daughter's college tuition does he have in his hand right now? <laughs> right, you wonder what's going on with the guy. But it's just like those machines are not going to work unless you have a crane, like in Toy Story. It ain't gonna happen. All right, no one got that reference. All right, whatever. And I get it. It's from the first Toy Story movie yeah, where they right. try to get the aliens out. Ha, ha. We can't laugh at everything, Ryan. Uh, anyway, I, uh, got, I got it. I was just sucking on my spearman gun. Yeah. Uh, one of the five, um, so so another man involved in the argument got into a dark colored vehicle following the shooting. Uh, the vehicle headed toward, um, I mean, headed west, um, away from the place. And the customers inside the restaurant took cover after the gunfire erupted. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that you bring your kid for a nice time at Chuck E. Cheese or uh, you know a odd time at Chuck E. Cheese, and then things get a little weirder when you hear gunshots at the front of the building, and you're just. <laughs> Taking your kids and hiding. Maybe everyone was hiding in the play place. Like, Neil, imagine this. Like, just imagine the chaos because you have so many kids there and there's been school shootings. There's been things like this to happen all the time where kids die. So you're trying to save your kid and you're like, why can't I just have one day where I hang out with my kid? I work six days a week. I'm a single dad who doesn't have custody of the kids. <laughs> so the one time you want to hang out with the kid, there's a goddamn shooting. Just imagine the frustration, Neil. I, I'm, what I'm thinking about right now is imagine if it happened on the day that Ryan got stuck in the little playpen. Yeah. And they're all trying to hide in the playpen and they get stuck. Yeah. So then I'd really be scared because I'm kind of claustrophobic as it is. So just oh, imagine. And then oh, my gosh. And being held up to your face. Yeah, there's there. a guy. I, that, that would not be. I, I would. Uh, I would have been crying for days. I'm very claustrophobic. I would hate that. Like, I'm the type of guy, Neil, when I'm on an airplane, I feel like I have ants in my body because I hate sitting in the window. And there uh -huh. was this one time, this guy had to be 300 pounds, smelled like failure and bad and <laughs> bad odor, and I just sit next to him. Worst three hours ever, man. And he was just like, 
So what do you think about Pittsburgh chances of winning the Super Bowl? I'm like, I don't care, buddy. I don't root for Pittsburgh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was just like the most random thing to bring up. It's like everyone watches Pittsburgh football. Everyone roots for Ben Raplesberger. I'm like, it was really strange. <laughs> Raplesberger. Yeah. You know, you talk about a 300-pound guy. Has there ever been a guy that's 300 pounds or more that's ever smelled good? I don't think – well, no, because they probably just smell like fast food. No, I smell plenty of them. But the thing is, you have to, like, take care of yourself. There's this new trend where everyone thinks it's okay to just kind of, like, maybe put some, like, hair gel in your hair so it looks like you showered, but you smell like failure – B.O. and crap in the fast food you ate last night that's under your armpit. Like, why don't people wash themselves? There's so many people I come in contact with every day. If it's at school, if it's at Mickey D's, if it's at the library or the gym, that smell awful. Like, take care of yourself. It's very rude. It's very selfish that you walk around smelling bad. Maybe you're so used to the odor, but it's in your house, or you're just so used to it on your body that you don't think it's that bad. But how dare you not shower? It's disrespectful to the rest of us, Neil. You know, I always tell women that, you know, I don't go out on Fridays. I really, I'm not a club guy. I'm not a bar guy. But above all else, I'm hygienic. <laughs> Call the show. Hey, guys, 630. I got to have something go for me. What's up, bro? I said I got to have something going for me. Yeah, right. How are the ladies treating you down there? Because I've been using that app, Tinder. It's all right. I got a girl's number. But she's, of course, 60 miles away at ISU. Like, Heaven forbid, Tinder Grammy with a girl that's within 30 miles. The one that was really hot blocked well, me. Well, ISU is more than 60 miles away. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah, like, you're, heaven you're forbid, talking about going something across, positive happened for me. What's up, Neil? you got to talk about going across Illinois and then Iowa, but you might as well go out to Iowa, especially the cornfields, because that's where you'll be starting. <laughs> and that's where we can do some action. <laughs> All right, that wasn't funny. Neil, how are the ladies treating you? Because me and you talk every day on Facebook, and there's that one Brazilian girl that's sexy with 14,000 fans. How is she treating you? Uh, good. I don't see her until Friday. Uh, that was just an interest. That was just an amazing discovery. You know, she's just this ordinary girl one day, and then I just look at her, do some homework, do some background check, and all of a sudden I just see this international Wait, model. You're doing a background check. What are you like? One of the guys from The Wire? Jesus Christ, Neil. I don't know why, but, you know, just saying, kind of looking around and you know, seeing who she is and stuff. But We've first all of all, primarily to make sure you. she's... What? Remember how close I was with that cute girl from Wisconsin who blocked me, like, two Saturdays ago? Like, super rich. You saw it. That girl was so cute, but she was turned off by my radio act or something. And she blocked me on Tinder. She didn't like your uh, your your radio act and your pregame Instagram videos that you put up. <laughs> Because the best part was, this girl was really cute. She added me on Tinder. And then, Neil, you were there. I'm just describing it to the radio world. She blocked me on Tinder and then unfriended me after she said she wanted a party in a few weekends. I'm like, just my luck, dude. Like, don't you notice that this always happens to me? Like, whenever I finally get a girl to talk to me or whenever I get a lead for a job or just anything positive in my life, something happens. And I just feel, dude. Like I'm in a TV show. Maybe like Curb Your Enthusiasm. I just feel like I'm Larry David, and me and you go back and forth with that joke. You know what I mean? You know, the only luck that you see, I see the music. Uh, the only luck that you seem to have is 57-year-old crack addict. <laughs> exactly. 57-year-old exactly. crack addict and weird people who call the show talking about when cops abuse them in DUI checkpoints. I got that going for me. I've been interning at Dance Factory for a year. But heaven forbid, a girl even look at me on Tinder. Uh, whatever. I really do need my own sitcom. Because so many things happen to me, Neil. I think it'd be better than any of the crap that's on CBS. You agree with me? Yeah, I, listen, before I go, I got a quick story. That's the reason I called in originally, because I had a quick story for you. So Yeah, go ahead. I was watching I was watching the first night game at Wrigley Field. This is 1988. I was watching it on YouTube. Wow, and you're that, that old? Get in. Exactly. Uh, that was the team of Harry Carey and Steve Stone on WGN. So the first batter comes up for the Phillies, hits a home run. Everybody's excited, and the cameras are flashing, and Harry Carey turns to Steve, and he's like, Steve, what's all the lights flashing all over the place? And Steve's like, that's the uh, cameras flashing, Harry. They're here to partake in this exciting moment at Wrigley Field. Huh. 
And I just thought, how behind on technology could one human be? <laughs> That's a good point. Although, I mean, he was great to listen to. It's just, uh, yeah, yeah, towards the end there, uh, especially when he was with the Cubs, he wasn't uh, the brightest tool in the shed. That's easy to say. What? Neil, imagine him now if he had to deal with, like, Facebook and social media because they'd, cause, like, um, they'd be like, tweet at us and use your hashtag so we'll use it on the air. And Harry would be like, what's a hashtag or something? You know what I mean? Right. He'd be so clueless in 2014. Fun fact, I'm actually uh, – I went to middle school with Harry Carey's great grandson. That's oh. pretty cool. Yeah, did he, no, it's pretty, pretty cool. epic. Did he? Embrace? Did you ask him for a gig? No, he never really told anybody. But my friend Mark uh, was on his baseball team, and he told uh, my friend Mark, and then my friend told me, and then yeah, I, I would talk to him about it sometimes. Well, here's the you thing: should have asked him to get a gig there, or come up into the press box for a gig. I know exactly. Well, here's the thing: Do you get money? Like, are you made of money when your dad is, or when your grandpa was Harry Carey? Like, how does that work? I or don't is this know. just well, average it, life, and that's just a name thing? No, he just lived in a normal house, you know, middle-class family. I knew uh, Roger Maris's granddaughter, and I also knew Dick Vermeil's grandson. They both go to school here. Yeah. My I dad's cousin cool. actually used to go out drinking with Harry Carey. That's pretty cool, too. That must have been a battle last. But uh, anybody to answer your question before, people could find me on Twitter, at Neil Dwyer, 1993. I'm like a snail. I'm kind of slowly climbing up to 100 and. 10 followers, you know, just doing two followers every about every two months or so. So keep the uh, keep the pace going, guys. Great job. And now, Neil, what are some of the things you have coming up on WVUM, which is where you're heard, and your sports desk show? Everything you do at the luxurious University of Miami down in South Beach where all the hot women are. Uh, well, first I gotta I gotta grow myself, so then I'll maybe I'll <laughs> okay. try to hook you. Neil, we gotta get up and out of here. So thank you for coming on the show. This has been the Hoppy and Super Rich Show on the Edge on Air dot com. I'm Ryan Hoppy, Ryan Stupridge, Ryan Risky. Peace out. The Hoppy and Super Rich Show. This is an official broadcast of Hoppy Radio. For more info, check out HoppyRadio dot com and Hoppy's World dot com.